In this video, you're going to learn how to design your first printed circuit board in less than 10 minutes. The board that we're going to be designing is a rather simple board. It's a simple regulator board that takes a 5 volt input and then outputs a 3.3 volt output with a load up to 200 milliamps. OK, let's go ahead and get started. So designing a printed circuit board is split into two parts. The first part is to design the schematic circuit diagram. And then the second part is to turn that schematic into a printed circuit board. So we're going to start by designing a schematic diagram for our regulator board. So I'm just going to create a new project. Let's just name it a uh, simple regulator. I'm going to open up a new schematic and I'm going to start placing a component. The first component is going to be the regulator, which is a Texas Instruments TPS 793 linear regulator, which happens to be one of the first parts I designed for TI when I was uh, hired as a microchip designer. Now I'm going to add the various capacitors. So there's always going to be an input capacitor, the C1 here. Let me add a footprint. We're going to use an 0805, which is a, just a standard footprint for a surface mount component. Now I'm just going to copy that, paste that over here for the output. And then this regulator has a third cap C3, which goes to the BP pin, which is, stands for bypass, and that gives you low noise. Now we're going to add our ground connection. Let me connect up the input cap, the output cap, and the bypass or noise reduction cap. And now let's connect up our grounds. Okay, one more. Okay, there we have the basics. Now we just need to enable the part. So we're gonna just tie that high so it's always enabled. Now we just need to add, we need some resistors. And the resistors are gonna be for some LEDs that we're adding. Let me add the LED um, or the resistor. Yeah, I'm adding the footprint for the resistor, which is still 0805. Need another resistor here in these. Like I said, are, these are gonna be current limiting resistors for our LED. We're gonna have a green LED on the output and I'm gonna do a red LED on the input. So again, I'm using the same footprint for all of these components, which is an 0805. We need to have that resistor because without that resistor, you would basically just it would burn out the LED. So you have to always have a resistor to limit the current. And we'll just copy the same thing over here. Let me get rid of that resistor. Move this up here, connect up the output LED. And now let's just add a connector for our input and output. And I'm just keeping this really simple. We're just going to add a, just a little two pin generic header just for the voltage and then the ground. Okay, let me mirror this to get the pins on the right side. I'm going to add the footprint for this connector. And I'm just using a standard uh, 2.54 millimeter pitch or spacing between the pins. Do the vertical version. Okay, now let me copy the same connector and we'll use the same connector for the output voltage. But once again, I need to uh, mirror that. Now let's just connect up this input connector to the supply, now to ground, and do the same thing for our output connector. Okay, so that is the basic circuit. Now we just need to set the capacitor sizes. So I'm going to go to the TPS793 data sheet. The, the regulator we're using. Usually you'll find a, an example circuit or a typical application circuit. Here it is. And you can see they have a 0 0.1 mic on the input, 2.2 microfarad on the output, and a 0 0.01 microfarad on the bypass capacitor or the bypass pin. So we'll set that to 0 0.1, this to 0 0.01. Okay, we have a finished schematic. I've gone ahead and set the two resistors, R1 and R3, to limit the current through these LEDs. And in the longer version of this video, uh, that you can find the link in the description below, I go through in detail how to calculate these two resistor values. Okay, so I'm gonna select Update PCB from Schematic, and th what that's gonna do is open the PCB editor, and it's going to place all of the components here, just kind of randomly all crammed together. So now we're just going to move these components around and place them in their proper locations. So we'll move the two connectors, the input connector J1, the output connector J2 at opposite sides of the board with U1, the voltage regulator, kind of being in the middle. Now we just need to place the input capacitor. Let me move these out of the way. 
And now I'm going to place the other two capacitors. We have the output capacitor, 2.2 microfarad, and the optional bypass capacitor or noise reduction cap, C3. And C3, the bypass cap is only required if you need low noise or high power supply rejection ratio, which is called PSRR. We're going to go ahead and include it, though, for this design. Let me just get these placed as close as I can to the pins. Let me get rid of some of these uh, the different notations here. We don't need the we don't need the values and stuff on the capacitor as long as they have the the reference designator, which is like J1, C1, C2. The only thing left are the two sets of LED with their current limiting resistors. Let me get these oriented the correct way and get rid of that. And now let's just rotate it. Okay, backwards. Okay, there we go. And okay, so now we've got the resistor with the power supply at the top and the diode with ground at the bottom. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing for the other LED and its current limiting resistor. Let me rotate these again, have them vertically placed with the resistor on top and the diode on the bottom. And move this designator over here. Let me move C2, get that a little closer. And then I'll just move the connector, the output connector closer. Let me get rid of this extra text. Okay, so now we have all of the components uh, placed. Now it's just a matter of connecting everything up. Okay, let's start with connecting the input capacitor to the input pin on the regulator. Then we'll connect that capacitor to the resistor, the top resistor. We'll connect the resistor to the LED. Need to tie the enable pin to the input voltage. So I'll just tie that up to this capacitor. Connect the bypass capacitor. Connect the output capacitor. Take the output off the capacitor and go up to our current limiting resistor for the LED. Connect up the resistor to the LED. And then finally connect up our output. So I've used minimum uh, trace or the default trace width, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to widen the, the main current path, even though this is sufficient for this low current, just to, to show you, it's usually a good idea to make your power line a little bit wider. I'm going to just set this to a half a millimeter. And you can see now I've got a nice thick line where that's where all the current's going to flow. Any of the other lines that are narrow don't really have any current or just have a few milliamps of current. Now I'm going to lay the board outline and add a copper port. Now a copper port is going to basically connect all of the grounds. It's going to fill up all the empty space with metal. And I'm going to, I've connected it to ground, setting the clearance and the maximum uh, width or the minimum width. Now let's just draw this copper pour each corner. Let me close this off, connect that. And now I'm going to just go fill this, this uh, copper pour or filled zone as they're called in KiCad. And you can see what that did is that connected all of our ground pins. Everything is connected into ground on this copper pour. Okay, so we now have our completed board with everything connected up, including the ground. And to keep things uh, extra simple, I've only have anything, any routing and, and, and also the copper pour is only on the top side. Now, the last step we wanna do is the design verification. So this is going to basically make sure that we have all of the, the rules are followed, um, that we don't have anything placed too close. Uh, we don't have anything that's, any traces that are uh, smaller than the minimum width that we've set. Um, so that's called design rules check or DRC. So we're gonna do that now. Design rules checker, run DRC. And you can see we have zero violations, zero warnings, zero errors. And this also ran a schematic verification to make sure the PCB design matches the schematic, which is obviously important. Okay, let's look at this in the 3D viewer now. And this is what the final board would look like. If you'd like to watch the longer version of this video, you can find the link in the description below. And in the longer version, I show all of the steps, some of which I skipped in this short version of the tutorial.